and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this colorful bird. We will be using oil pastels, black watercolor dye, and even a barbecue skewer to scratch off the amazing textures on this bird's feathers. All right, let's get started with pencil, eraser, and Sharpie marker first. Let me teach you how to draw the bird. So first we have our paper and it is divided in half and in half. And remember to measure all the way to the corners. That makes up the difference for if we use different width of tape. All right, so first off, I'm gonna put a few lines in places to help us stay kind of together. So here's the middle point. We need kind of a floating platform there. And let's see, lower than the middle, we need a floating platform there. And we'll go to the back of this line and not too near to the back, but we will do kind of a bendy straw hanging out up there. Down here at this one, we're gonna put a triangle. And halfway at the middle here, we will put a diving board going that way. So those would be good places to get started to kind of connect the dots for what we're doing. All right, this line over here is gonna be a beak. So first off, we just kind of turn it into an arrow pointing to the right. And then we wanna kind of include a little nostril nook and then the front of the head is flat, like a number one. Then we wanna connect this beak to that number one, because remember a bird's beak wraps around its face. It's not just stuck on there like a triangle. And then the bottom beak will connect to that number one there. The other side of its head will be pretty close to this one. We'll go out like maybe about here and put a little diagonal. And then we're gonna arc it from here to there. And you can be a little wiggly, maybe even put a few feathers to get that head on there. Now we'll kind of look from here to here and maybe a little more to the left and center. We will put a circle for the eye. I like to use kind of a Pac-Man shape so that we can get a sparkle later and we don't color that in too much. There is a bit of a mask on this bird and normally I would come back to do the details, but it's okay to do it now because it goes over the eye and behind and they would kind of go over the eye again. So you wanna leave enough space where that doesn't touch, cause this will be black and this will be black. So you need to leave a vacancy there. All right, we can connect the bird's shoulders to our floating platform there. And then the front of the bird is gonna be pretty much a vertical line, but I'm gonna draw it like feathers. So it'll be like lightning coming straight down to that line. All right, from here, we're gonna do the wing tips coming down to a little past the halfway mark on this line. So this would be the middle, a little past the halfway line. So it's gonna kind of stay in a triangle shape, but I'm not gonna draw it because that's just my guideline for where I'm headed. And yeah, so let's go from here to here first with some short feathers kind of zigzag them um, to connect to there. And then we're gonna kind of work our way in layers. So let's see, we'll go over and up for that one, over and up for that one, over. And let's make this one a little fancier. Let's go below our line and back up for like the point on that wing. And let's add a couple more lines kind of folding up under there. All right, we have the wing. Sticking out the back, we need a tail. And so let's go down to about even with there and draw a feather that is like a J almost to the, to the tape over there. And we'll continue back. And then let's do some like little feathers back here to make it look a little more complicated. There we go. All right, 
Now the body of the bird is kind of a bowl shape. So we can know that probably this tail feather will show up here and here, and that we're headed about there for the other side of the bowl. So let's start going back. Oh, and let's go maybe to here on our helping line so that we go. Oh, and press gently because we might have to erase later when we draw some legs, so. All right, so that bird has a nice round circle feel for its body. And now let's think about his little legs. Um, we'll have his leg, He's this will be his little bottom coming at us, and he's kind of turning his head to look at us, so we're going to see the back of his legs. And remember, their knees are on the other side, so our knees bend forward, bird's knees bend backward, so it's a little bit more like if we walked with our elbows. So let's make like a letter L, put a bit of fluffiness for the fur where the leg sticks out, and... There we have the leg coming out the other side. And then we'll erase the x-ray vision out of that leg. And then we're gonna have a toe go this way and a toe go that way. It kind of looks weird, but it'll look good in a minute. All right, and so let's make this toe a little longer and we'll put a branch and then wrap the toe around the branch. And then we'll continue the branch and start on the next toe. So back here we'll have a leg coming down, down, and toe wrap around the branch. And then the branch can connect to our diagonal that we drew before. All right, um, it looks like all the birds. So let's put some branches to make it more interesting for our bird to live in. So we're going to continue our branch this way and then kind of give it a bud kind of growing area and then a thickness to the branch and another bud kind of growing area like that. And I put the buds here because I'm going to create kind of a thorny bush for this bird to sit on. So we'll put a thorn there, a thorn there. We'll have like three thorns at these locations. And then we'll put some like pink blossom leaves in there. So let's just go in between with something like a leaf or a raindrop kind of shape. And let's put another bud going behind him with a thorn there. Just kind of using our space to create the shape. So I could have made the thorn go off, but instead I used this edge of the paper and I have my thorn up there. And it looks pretty empty up here, so we'll add up there as well. And some thorns. I'm sticking with the three. I'm not an arborist, so I don't know what kind of tree would have that, but it's just kind of how I think I want to make it work today. All right, that is all the drawing part, and now let's get our black Sharpie marker out so that we can trace it. We still have the helping lines that make the plus sign. I could erase that now, but I think I can trust myself not to trace those lines, and so I'm going to trace all my lines first and then erase those helping lines afterwards. So I'm not gonna trace the helping lines. At least I hope I'm not. Um, I'm gonna try really hard not to trace those. If you don't think you can trust yourself, it's not a problem to go ahead and erase them now. Um, but I'm just gonna wait until I trace everything. Now that everything is traced, I'm going to erase everything, not just the big plus sign, but I'm going to erase everywhere because I don't want the graphite that is still there, even if it's covered with Sharpie marker, to smear around and get some of the bright colors dirty. So I'm going to clean up the whole thing.
Everything's been erased, and now we will color certain things in with our black Sharpie marker. So the bottom of the beak will be black. We're gonna go from our little nostril section into this mask that goes around the eye with black. And the reason we're doing this, uh, black just works so much easier from a Sharpie marker. You have really good control over it. Once it's on, it doesn't smear. And we'll be using oil pastels to put the color in in just a moment. And we won't want to use the black oil pastel because it gets really smeary. Those little schnoodlins get everywhere. And so this is just the best way to control black. And so that's why I prefer using it. Uh, plus, I like being able to do like shadows, things like this. So we'll do the shadow side on this branch. Now he hadn't drawn this yet. But you can just kind of go alongside and shadow it. We're going to get one of these little feathers to be black. And we'll do one kind of tucked under for his little tail feather. It'll create interest in the bird. And this kind of bird has kind of dark colored legs, but I'm just going to create like a highlight by putting a letter V and coloring to the little elbow here. So his legs will stand out a bit from his colorful body. And I do not know what kind of bird this is. I am not a bird expert, but I just really like it. And I maybe got a little carried away with colors. That's okay. One thing, I think I'm going to go ahead and close the circle on the Pac-Man and then it'll have a little sparkle inside. Time for our colors! Today I have my 25 color set of Expressionist Oil Pastels. My box has been well loved and used and so I don't have a label on my lemon yellow anymore. But the lemon yellow, the lighter yellow, is the one that we're going to start with. And so to begin, we're going to put some lemon yellow on his little forehead here and go right above his little eye and stop when we get to the little pointy tip. And then we will come around his little bottom too, so kind of down his little front next to the feathery edges. The light is kind of shining through him. Um, so his fluff, his bird down, is glowy from the light shining through him. All right, so get that in place. And then we're going to put some on the bottom tail feather here. And while we're at it, the thorns have a bit of yellow to them. So we'll do a little yellow on our thorns. I'm using pretty good pressure. Uh, we want a good waxy coat, because if it doesn't have a thick, wa thick waxy coat, then you won't be able to do the scratching later. All right, next is yellow ochre. All right, so the yellow ochre is gonna go in some of the similar places as, as we did with that, and we're gonna go kind of on top of our yellow, a little farther up for his little birdie head here. And we'll go around the eye and fill in that gap right in there. Uh, we're gonna layer on top of the lemon that we put on the edge of the little bird body. This seems like more of a natural color, a color you might expect on a bird. So it kind of takes away from the shocking look. And we'll go all the way to his little leg there, like his little little hip hip. And let's see. Yeah, let's put this color on with the gold color for the thorns. Okay. 
and on the tail feather. All right, so everywhere we put the light yellow, we're gonna put this yellow ochre color too. Okay, great. All right, we're gonna skip to red, and what, you're welcome to take your wrapper off if it's starting to get too short. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my wrapper off here, and I'm gonna put a little red up on his little ochre head here at the top. And then to make our flowers look more interesting, we'll have red tips on them. And so it looks pretty bright and like fall right now. And then by the time we're done, you've seen from the reference, it gets a bit more colors for sure. More purples and pinks happen to it. Maybe a little red feather action here. And I'll put some on the tips of this little tail up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's enough red. Now we will have some purple. Okay, so there's some purple. This is the light purple, by the way. And there's some purple on his little beak, so we'll do the line about there. And there's some purple beneath his eye. Kind of part of his little mask there too. And under his little chin till you get to the gold color. And then let's put maybe a stripe of purple on this wing that we put the little shade, shadow there. And we'll put a little purple on top of the red on the tail feathers back here. Then we'll go below this wing. I'm going to draw a line so I know where to stop. So I'm going to go down on his little feathers that cover his leg from there. Just like that. I'm going to blend the purple in with this red color, too, over here. All right, I like that. And we're going to put some purple on his feet. The parts that we didn't color black, we will make purple. There we have it. And because later on I think this will look pretty good, I'm going to put little purple in this corner. So I think there's something back there that's blurry and purple that we can't see very well. And so we'll just do that. Like that. There. Good. I'm going to put some purple on this gold right here. Okay. Next is cobalt blue, or it's the one that looks like regular blue. So we're going to include that. And let's put some sticking out farther from his little mask. And let's finish out this wing that has purple on it with the blue. Because this color blue is pretty dark. And then we'll have a little bit under the wing right here. And then I'm going to play with blue on the branches. So kind of next to our shadows. I know, a blue branch? I know. But... It'll look good with the gray, because we're going to have gray later for the branch. And I think that'll be nice under there. All right. That seems like a good enough amount for regular blue. And now let's switch to our pale blue. Love using the pale blue. So the pale blue will go on top of the purple that we put on the beak and finish out the top part of the beak. And then I'm going to draw a little line like down to these bottom feathers here and all of this chest will have the light blue color and I'm going to press hard enough that you can't really see little white spaces too much on his chest so kind of fill that in right now he kind of looks like an ice cream flavor because he's got so many colors going on here and let's do a little bit of light blue on this wing and a stripe on this one, and a little light blue on the short part of its tail feathers there. Okay, and yep, 
because I know I'm gonna do something interesting in the background, I'm gonna put a little blue in this corner. Because remember, we're scratching off. Those of you who did the fig project know what to expect on that. So we got this corner with light blue, and then we're gonna put some light blue over in this corner too. And I'm leaving more spaces when I'm putting it in the background. Okay, my opposite light blue corners. All right, great. Next, we can do our Prussian blue or our dark blue. Okay, so we're gonna need some dark blue coming out to the end of this tail feather there. Gonna add some stripes of Prussian blue on his little wings. And hmm, I kind of feel like putting some Prussian blue where I put the cobalt, because I think that those colors will play well together. Yeah. All right, you know, I used a lot of that before, but that's probably enough of it for this picture. Um, we had fun with that one with the figs, though. Okay. Gray. Gray is what I've been promising you for these branches. So now we color right on top of the Prussian blue. We kind of leave the black though. So if Prussian blue got on the black part we colored, we leave that with the black and blue so that we get these nice gray branches. And I'm pressing pretty hard. Uh, you notice that your kit came with a barbecue skewer. We will use that later, um, so we don't need it yet. Let me do a little bit on his little, little black legs, because gray will go right on top of this black. So a little ways up for a highlight. And let's put some gray on some of his wings here. Maybe even here and here and some on the tail and a little bit on these shoulder feathers. All right, that looks great. Next, we're gonna find the pink one, ready with our pink, and we're gonna blend. We're gonna do our little flowers. We're gonna go on the red part and on the white part. So it blends the red together and if you don't like messy colors, uh, then you can use a paper towel to kind of clean it off before you color with it. But I really like it when color gets into everything. And so I just find I press harder and it kind of mushes away any color that I don't want to show up. And this color takes over. So go ahead and just go with it. And if other colors show up, all the better, because then it looks interesting. That on there. I'm pressing quite hard. You can see very little white spots. And let's put some pink up on his head. We go up here on the red part that we did. We may do a little pink there to his little little mask color. Okay, and let's put pink in this corner. We had purple in that one, so I think a little pink will be neat over here. Okay, maybe a little bit between the thorn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next color is the pale orange, which I think we normally think of like as a peachy color. And this is gonna be our blendy color that does a lot of blending of all the colors that we have so far. And so it's gonna go on the empty part of his head up here the, and the empty part of his wing because that was the last part that we hadn't gotten, right? But it's also gonna be the color that goes on top of the yellow ochre and it goes on top of the red and it goes on top of the blue and it goes on top of the gray. We don't go on the eye though. Well, I guess you can, but if you do, go in a controlled manner. Here's me going on the eye in a controlled manner. Yep, okay. Um, so it, we're just trying to stay in our Sharpie lines when we do this, that's all. So I'm going on top of the blue, going on top of 
a dark blue. I'm going to try not to go on the black feathers that I made, but eh, it won't be a problem if I did here. I'll go on it on purpose there. And then you can tell at the end that it wasn't a big deal. Go on top of this purple. And you can see I'm using so much pressure that I'm even thinking about the direction that I'm coloring because I'm leaving behind like almost awake, like I was really messing up the waters here, but it's not water, it's oil pastel. And I'm leaving marks. So because of that, I'm thinking about the directionality that the bird's feathers might grow so that if I leave marks, they're in the shape of feathers. Gonna color his tail feathers. Go on top of that black, no problem. We'll see what happens when we scratch it out. Maybe that black is not important, maybe it is. We'll find out. It'll be our experiment. White is next, and before we do anything else, we need to save that little sparkle in its eye with white, because if we wait till we put paint on it, then it'll go away. So I did that first, and then I'm just going to lighten up these thorns, because they're so bright with the yellow and the yellow ochre. They'll look nicer with this little bit of white to calm them down. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and I'm going to put a little white on the beak because I think I want lighter than the blue and purple by itself. So I'm going to calm that down with some white so that's brighter. I see I forgot to do part of my branch. I'm going to grab some gray to do this part that sticks out. There we go. All right. Gray green. So this is a green color that's called gray green. And I think because it's kind of a neutral green that it will go great with all the colors that we have here. And it's going to be the whole background color. So not the branches, thorns, or the leaves, and not the bird. But... The places we put purple, blue, and pink, we get to just cover it right up with this gray-green and then all the white places too. And so that mixes a bit and creates an interesting background. And we're going to color the whole thing. That's what it looks like with all the green gray in the background or gray green in the background. And then I think I'd like to do it a little lighter. So I'm gonna take my white and on the side like this, kind of rub a little on top of those greens in the background. I'm not going on the bird or the branches, but I just like to lighten it slightly. Cause I know I'm gonna use black watercolor. And I think that will have a nice appearance. I could have put white on the paper before doing the gray green and the colors, uh, but I didn't think about that. So that could have been good too. Somebody can try that by doing this first and then we can see how it turns out better or worse or the same or just different. A lot of times in art, it's more different than better or worse, right? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to squirt this on. You can see there's like white spaces near the Sharpie marker because I didn't want to cover the Sharpie marker. And I think the black will look nice when it goes there. And so I'm just going to put that on there. I'm wearing my gloves. I'm going to use a sponge and wipe it all around. Kind of go in multiple directions so it gets in every nook and cranny and goes all the way to the corners. I'm going to use my paper towel and dry it off. And everything looks quite gray, especially with that white that we put on top of the gray green. And I like the gray feel of this picture, so I like how they all kind of gray up with the white and the peach and the white and the pink, the white and the blue. We get a nice kind of gray feel. And then you can see the black Sharpie still peeking through where I didn't color over that. So that was good. And I'm ready to scratch. 
And now for our barbecue skewer. All right, as always with any of the lessons that I do, uh, this is just one way to do it. It's not the way to do it. So if you wanna do something different, feel free. You don't have to copy me exactly on every single thing uh, because these are the ideas that I have and I have lots of fun doing them and teaching them to you, but you're welcome to do them in a different way too. Uh, so first off, the beak. Um, I want to have some light coming on this side of the beak, so I'm just going to scratch with the back, not the pointy side, the back coming right down inside the beak, just inside that black Sharpie line. And then I'm going to go right under the nostril and then do a little line for where the beak open and closes. And then I'll leave the rest of that color there. Uh, and then I get to scratch off that highlight in the eye. Remember we save that and scratch a curve so that that eye stands out right away very nicely. Okay, now I'm switching back to the pointy side and I'm gonna give him a little mohawk. Mohawk. And I'm just gonna keep using little rows with the pointy side of this stick so that he gets those cute little feathers. Oh, I love it. So I'm not scratching it all off. I'm scratching with little ones. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening. Even closer. See that? It's like he's got little flames on his head. And just the tip. or like grasses growing on a little birdie hillside head there. Those colors we put in were completely worth it so we could get this result for those little feathers on his head there. So they all kind of start at the black mask and go up to his little head there. All right. Underneath, these guys are gonna be going this way, so Put them all going kind of towards his little chest. So this is the opposite direction. So those went up and these are going out and down. I almost forgot for a second it was a bird instead of a mammal, right? So it looks like fur, but these are just the little lines on his little feathers. And then we'll go around as I am trying not to scratch on his eye because I don't want to lose that nice glowy circle that we have. And so now it'll start sunshining back in that direction. You can kind of see they're like in little rows. All right, and then these are going to go down the back. we get to that black sharpie wing line. He's so cute. And we come more down his tummy. Tummy, 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 tummy. I got my paper towel to put, pick off those schnoodlins when they happen. And as I get down, farther down the tummy, they can get a teeny bit longer. And they can crisscross slightly. Oh yeah, I've got that black line there. Okay, so I gotta be cautious that I don't go into my wings there. So I'm gonna start tilting my hand in this direction so that the, the feather lines are almost laying down when they come under this wing. So it's drawing with scratching on this one. 
scratch off of his little dancing hips here. And then we're going to get his little floofs underneath of there from his tummy. And then we'll connect the two areas here. Okay, we got all the short floofs. Super cute. And then if you need any extras, you can just kind of go back in and follow the direction that you've been going. Uh, so there's definite directionality on there. All right, on his wing, wing feathers, we need those to be longer striations. So we're gonna go kind of in this direction to follow the lines, similar to how we drew them when we did the pencil and the Sharpie. So we're just doing kind of parallel kinds of things. And also on the tail. Notice when it's black underneath, that less shows up. That's why we put those there. All right, and I'm gonna tap off the sugar lens. All right, let's clean the curves off the tips of this tail feathers. So that they're a little brighter out here. There we go. And I think I want to try to do what I did on the fig drawing for the background and kind of use the side to mush up the background. So I'm going to go in little circles. There's that purple under there. There's that green back there. And I'm just using the side to kind of mush it up. And So remember, this is like um, like an Olin Mills background or something. We, we just want a pleasant background for our bird to be dwelling in. And it's likely that there's like more trees and leaves back there. And this is just where it's not in good focus. So by using the side of the stick, I don't get like just a big one in it. I get it kind of just scraping off this surface, almost like a bulldozer was pushing the cray paw along. And we'll do that in the whole background. And the reason I'm going back and forth is I'm happy that some of it is reapplied in the reverse stroke. So like one stroke takes it off and backing up kind of rubs it back on again because I'm trying for that modeled look. Uh, so it's more interesting than just if it was colored to have it kind of mushed around. You cut them upside down because I can reach in there better. Okay, back to the front corner. Who knew that a barbecue skewer was going to be such an important part of your oil pastel art kit? But this thing is very helpful. All right, now if it looks too defined, you can use your finger and kind of rub it again. So you can go back and forth You're like, oh no, I rubbed it too much. Then you can like scratch it a bit more. Um, so to try to get that modeled kind of gray background for the bird. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And now to do the bark of the branches. So I'm turning my barbecue skewer to the back end where it's flat again and I'm going to use the flat end to take off 
little ones on this branch. And notice where it's colored black, nothing much is going to happen. But where it's just gray and blue, it'll get lighter. my little stumps. All right, and let's go ahead and scratch a single line out of inside of each thorn, maybe two. I want those thorns to be bright against that background. Okay, our thorns are all scratched off and nice and bright. Uh, the things we have left to do are the little pink blossom thingies and his little foot. So let's go back to the pointy part of our stick and let's do little C's on his little bird legs. And you notice when you get to the black that it doesn't show up much. So it's on the legs where it wasn't colored black, but I still do those letter C's even on the black and gray. So that gives him some nice texture for his legs. And now for the little flower petals. I don't know what these are. Um, so I'm going to start by kind of outlining the red part and then just do little striations back from the red part. You can make your own decisions. If you want to scratch them all the way off, you can. But I like seeing the, the colors on top when these kind of shining through. So I'm, the rule for me is I'm just going to do the tip and then follow whatever the curve is on these little leaves. That is our bird's graffito project for this month. So now we'll take off the tape and we will be happy to see this finished. Here it is all finished with the tape removed and now you can sign it with a pen, pencil, or sharpie on the white edge. Ta-da! Hope to see you soon at one of our meetups. Thank you very much.